Hi guys, my name is Eza and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing a May wrap up. So in the month of May, I read about like five books and the first book is a graphic novel called My Boyfriend is a Bear by Pamela Ribon. And the synopsis of this book is that bear meets girl. Nora has bad luck with men. When she meets an actual bear on a hike in the Los Angeles hills, he turns out to be the best romantic partner she's ever had. He's considerate, he's sweet, he takes care of her, but he's a bear. And winning over her friends and family is difficult. Not to mention he has to hibernate all winter. Can true love conquer all? So I gave this book a 4 out of 5 because, I don't know, the premise of it just seems so spectacular, so incredulous to me. Like, I'm just like, wow, who knew people can even make this story? So I found it to be a really fun, light read. Like, there's no nuance to it. There's no, like, emotional depth or something. It's definitely just for you to read when you're having, like, a stressful day. It's really funny, too. So I'll give it that. And the next book that I read is... Wait, let me load on my Goodreads. So the next book that I read is Breathless by Celeste Bradley and Susan Donovan. So the synopsis for this book is that she was the swan, London's premier courtesan. Men want to be with her, women loathe her success, yet admire her beauty, her riches, her independence. But when the jealous wife of her lover moves to have the swan banished from her home on the high seas, she winds up crashed against Spain's rocky coast with no shoes, no clothes, and no name. Taken in by a tortured, sensuous man known as the artist, the swan comes to know the woman she wants to be, her artist siren. When art professor Brenna Anderson is in danger of losing her post at Harvard, the rule-following prim professor is at loss of how to salvage the shreds of her life. But when a new painting in the mysterious siren collection is discovered in a dusty old house in France, Brenna does the unthinkable, hops on a plane to uncover the identity of the beautiful enigmatic woman who is the subject of the paintings. There's just one hitch. It's usually like that. The frustrating, irritating, bold, and beautiful art hunter Fitch Wilder is also looking for the siren. He's been a thorn in a Brenner's professional side for years. But when the, their individual quests lead them to team up despite being enemies, a whole new sumptuous world of art and culture opens up for the two of them. And with it, they enter a realm of passion and love. So, yeah... I gave this book a 4 out of 5, and the reason I gave it 4 out of 5 instead of a 5 out of 5 is because I did not like the contemporary romance aspect of the book. I felt like it was, it was bland, it was boring, it's something that, you know, it's very generic, like, I've read it before. They go on an adventure, they fall in love, and they live happily ever after. Also, I didn't like how... Brenna's family life or background wasn't fleshed out enough like had it been fleshed out more or like tidbits of it or like talked about in the book maybe I would have cared for Brenna but other than that I felt like I did not care what happened to the main characters in the contemporary romance aspect of it it was more like I just skimmed through heck sometimes I just skipped skipped it completely because I wanted to read more of the historical romance of it and let me tell you oh my boobies and let me tell you in the historical romance aspect oh my god it is perfect the plot the writing just perfect and the ending oh my god it broke my heart heart it just broke me to pieces like why why did the authors make that ending i just don't understand the swan deserves happiness you know she deserves everything she just finally found happiness and that is how you end it oh my god i just i just cannot let's just put it this way the ending for the historical romance plot broke me it broke me and that's all i'm gonna say so, the next book that I read is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So, I'm not going to talk much about, like, the synopsis because at this rate, everybody knows about it, you know. 
So this review for the book, I don't know how to phrase it. I just felt like it was a really good book, you know? I felt, I don't know, I felt like it was a really good book. I don't know how to phrase my review because I just don't know. It's like, how, how do you phrase it? You know, I felt like it was really good. It opened my eyes to the problems that the black people are facing in America. And it also shows me that I don't know. All I know is that I really, really like the book. I genuinely like the book. I liked how the characters are complex. Like, for example, they're more than just black people. They are they are having problems with racism in America. They also have family issues, like ex-partner issues, sugar daddy issues, spousal abuse, domestic abuse. They have racism in school. They have internalized racism by white people who are being racist, but they're too fucking ignorant to even know that they're racist. You know, I really like the complexity of the book with so many characters dealing with so many things. All at the same time, it just felt like an emotional roller coaster. So that is my review for this book. Sent, like, accumulated into one sentence. It's an emotional roller coaster of a book. So read it gave it a five out of five nothing wrong with this book it is perfect but also it makes me want to read more books written by you know african americans or like black people in general because now i'm like really curious i do have 12 years a slave so i'm probably gonna read that but i'm not very good with classics too so that's the hitch so the next book that i read is the is The Eighth Day by Mitsuyo Kakuta. And the book is... The year is 1985. Kiwako is an ordinary office worker in love with a married man until an unwanted abortion causes her to fucking snap. She kidnaps her lover's six-month-old baby and runs away with her, eventually taking refuge in an all-female religious commune. Here she attempts to raise the girl. Fifteen years later, the child, Elena, is an adult contending with the difficulties of returning to her natural family, made up of a mother who doesn't come home, an alcoholic father, and siblings with whom she can't connect. And yeah, that's pretty much the plot of this book. And I give this book a 4 out of 5, I think. And the reason I didn't give it like a complete 5 out of 5 is because I expected like an... I expected something else, but what I read was something else. And it's not the author's fault. I just went in with the wrong expectations. But the book is a very slow book. I expected, like, action, drama, romance. I don't know, something like that. But what I got was a very slice of life, very slow, chill type of book. You know, there practically in this book, nothing happens. Nothing. It's just about this woman who, what is her name again? Kiwako, this Kiwako girl. She kidnaps the baby and she tries to raise the girl. And that is it for the first half of the book. That's all that happens. She keeps running away and she tries to be like this single parent and she's trying to be a good parent. She knows she's being selfish. She knows that what she did is wrong. And I don't know, it's just a very slow type of book. And at the end of the book, the only thing that I realize is adults can be fucking selfish. And I say this because like Kiwako herself was selfish. She realizes that what she's doing is wrong. Like taking this kid away from her natural family, her birth family, just because she couldn't have a kid. And also the guy that she was having an affair with. He is the most selfish bastard I've ever read in my life. Like, there's a part in this book where Kiwako, like, she doesn't want to continue the relationship anymore. So she quit her job after the abortion, I think. Or is it before the abortion? I'm not sure. But she quit her job. She went back to her hometown to take care of her, like, ailing dad. But this guy just won't fucking leave her alone. He literally calls her, pesters her, ac- just flew in to Kiwako's hometown, sweet talks her, tells her, yes, I'm gonna leave my wife for you. Obviously, she's gonna believe it because he also showed action, you know. He came all the way there to her hometown. He sweet talked her, talked to the dad. 
like paid for everything. So what is a girl to believe? You know, she's already having stressed, like she's already stressed with her dad dying, and suddenly like this guy who won't leave her alone says like he loves her. Obviously, she's gonna believe. I don't even blame the girl. So at the end of the day, the person to be blamed for all this fiasco is the father. He should die. But yeah, I feel like. All I feel like all of the characters in this book, they're all flawed. They're all selfish in their own ways, you know? And I don't know. It's like, I feel like it's, it's not really an eye-opening book. It's a book that you read at the beach at your own leisurely time. Kind of like a very chill type of book, you know? I would I would not recommend this book if you want some action drama type of book. It, it, this book is not for you because trust me when I say in this book nothing fucking happens nothing happens at all so I think that was why I gave this book a 4 out of 5 because part of me was disappointed that nothing happened but at the same time I also really enjoyed it for a slow book it really made me read like towards the end like it was not boring it was just a slice of life type of book, you know? You feel? So that's my review for that one. And the next book that I read, this is surprising. I read this book within a day. And it is The Duke of Lies by Darcy Burke. And let me just find the synopsis because I'm not, I'm not very good at explaining synopsis of a book. Let's just wait for the good reads to load. So this book, right. <clears throat> The Duke of Lies by Darcy Burke. Virgie Beaumont has suffered domineering men most of her life, first with her father and then with her husband. Free from both men, she has finally found peace, even meeting a kind and hard-working gentleman who just might be the perfect father her young son so desperately needs. But as she dares to look to the future, her carefully ordered world is shattered when her dead husband returns. Imprisoned in America during the war, Rufus Beaumont, Duke of Blackburn, wants nothing more than to return to his native England. He longs for comfort and safety away from the horrors of battle, only the life he returns to is not the life he left. He must convince his wife that their marriage is worth fighting for, that he's not the man he was. But when the truth about what happened to him leaks out, he must prove that not everything about him, especially his love for her, is a lie. So, to be quite honest, I actually fr I joined this book blog tour and I completely forgot about it literally forgot about it completely I only remembered about it a day before I was supposed to do my review and mind you I only realized it in the middle of the night so I only had like a few hours to read the book and post a review you know so, but since it's historical romance, I had no worries because historical romance and I, we match. I love it so much. I finished this book in two hours. So, the reason I give this book a four out of five instead of the usual five out of five that I give to historical romance books is that I felt like the ending is a bit wonky. The, what do you call it, the motivations of the father-in-law doing what he did was weird for me. It's kind of like... It made no sense, you know? It wasn't logical. It wasn't smart. It's like, what was he hoping to achieve? I don't understand. I don't know whether it's me reading it too fast, but I usually read historical romance pretty fast and I understood the story quite easily, motivations and all. But this book, the ending, the motivation, it's just, I did, don't get it. Like, why would you do that? Makes no sense to me. But other than that, that is the only problem that I have with the book. I felt like um, the, what do you call it, the relationship between Verity and Rufus, the two main characters of the book, I felt like their relationships were very healthy. Yeah, Rufus, Rufus did lie to her uh, about his past and what happened, but when he was found out, he came up, he came straight out clean when I thought he was going to lie again. So he came straight out clean. He didn't lie to Verity anymore. Like he told her what happened. And then like when problems arise, he talked to her like, okay, this is the problems that, I've, that I'm facing right now. What should we do? 
what should we do as a team like what do you think is the best way to go forward with this problem i felt like it was very healthy it, it is a very healthy respectful relationship another thing that i liked about this book that made me give it a four out of five is because i felt like how the author wrote verity was very smart she's a she the author wrote verity as an intelligent woman you know and i like how by she made verity intelligent by her own merit she found out about the what do you call it about the secret that rufus was hiding through her own merit you know she found it all on her all on her own and i really like that because sometimes like historical romance authors to make the female characters the female main character smart they kind of dumb down every other character so the main character looks smarter but actually she's just pretty fucking stupid she's just the smartest out of every dumb other characters you know so i really don't like that but in this book it was different she was smart on her own she figured it out on her own and i like it and yeah aside from the ending the book was pretty good. So, next I read... This one is manga, by the way. I read, I think, three mangas. I read a few more, but I can't remember the names. And the first is Killing Stalking. And I gave this a 5 out of 5. This manga, or manhwa, because it's a Korean comic, shook me to the core. Like, this manhwa needs its own video. Like, I can't... I can't even tell you what I feel. What this book made me feel is just intense. <sighs> it's by Kugi, by the way. That's the author's name. I give this a 5 out of 5, obviously. It doesn't even deserve a 5 out of 5. It deserves like a 10 out of 5. It's just so fucking good. You should read it. Yes, it has like a gay relationship. And it's very graphic. Don't read it if you're easily triggered. Because it is a psychological thriller. It's about this guy. He's like a really small, timid type of guy called Yoon Bom. He has like a stalking tendency. And then he falls in love with this guy called Seong Woon, I think. Yeah, Seong Woon. And he follows this Seong Woon dude and he breaks into Seong Woon's house. But then, while he was in the house, he realized that Seong Woon has a female captive there and he's like fuck what the fuck is this but before he could manage to like run away or anything Seong Won comes back and like bashes him on the head and keeps him as a captive so now it's this whole psychological thing of like trying to escape this domineering guy who's not only handsome he's charming he's sweet he's complicated but he's also a psychopath so then it's it's kind of like him trying to escape but not really wanting to escape either. Like I told you, it needs its own video because this manhwa is fucked up in both good and bad ways, you know? And the next one that I read is Futari no Renai Shoka by Kore Yamazaki. I don't know the, what do you call it? I don't know the English title but I gave this a 5 out of 5 and this talks about this young woman I think early 20s who falls in love who loves books by the way she loves books she has her own small little bookstore and she falls in love with a high school guy and she asks him to marry her and that's it that's the plot like there's there's not there's nothing sexual it's really like a really sweet story it's about them like learning how to live together like how the dynamics of their relationship how their love for books bounded them together how they're trying to get to know each other their families and it's kind of like slice of life i'm realizing now that i really like slice of life mangas who knew and the next manga that i read is everyone's getting married by izumi miyazono i gave this a four out of five and this manga talks about this girl i cannot remember her name but this girl girl a let me just put it girl a she wants to get married like seriously she wants to get 
hitched. But she falls for a guy who does not want to get hitched. So now, like, the whole premise of the book is kind of like, she wants to get hitched, he doesn't want to get married, but they want to be together, you know? So now she's worried that if they're not going to get married, then why, then they're going to break up eventually, and she doesn't want that. And he doesn't want to get married, but he doesn't want to let her go, but he also realizes that he can't be selfish and keep her if she wants to get married, but he doesn't want to get married, if you get what I'm saying. But I haven't finished this manga because, um, same goes for Killing Stalking because they're not updated yet. So yeah, I give it a 4 out of 5 because, I don't know, I really like it. And it's just, it's just nice, you know. Let's just put it that way. So, next is TV series. TV series, I literally binge watched Elementary. Season 1 to Season 6. I haven't finished Season 6, by the way. But, like, yeah, I binge watched it. This was recommended to me by my best friend, Jell. And uh, she was, like, saying, oh, Elementary is really good. If you like Sherlock, then you would definitely like Elementary. And I was being kind of snobbish about it because I really like Sherlock BBC. So I was like, elementary can't be that good. It's such like, such a cop-out, you know? It's like, like a copycat. But then when I watched it, I was hooked. I was like, ooh, it's actually really good. It's really, really good. And I really liked how each season, it doesn't have like an overarching nemesis throughout like the, the six seasons. Each se season has its own nemesis and its own like, I don't know, threatening-ish? I don't know what I'm saying. But it's not like supernatural, you know, where it's like every season you have like another big bad and the next season is just badder and badder and the worst, you know? You get what I mean? But with elementary, it's just like each season brings its own antagonist and it brings its own problems. For example, the first season was, was Moriarty, I think. that I think it was Moriarty. And second season was also Moriarty, if I'm not mistaken. But it was Moriarty in a different sense. And then you get, like, the third season, which is gang-related issues. And then, or was that the fifth season? I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up now. It was the fifth season where you have Shinwell and his gang-related issues. And the sixth season season i think it's about this serial killer who's playing games with sherlock when he's having like a hard time mentally physically emotionally because he's sick so each season has its different antagonist that tests watson and sherlock in different ways and it's not like it's not constantly you get antagonist that's just better and worse and worse and worse it's just worse in their own way you know so i did that and i guess that's it for my may wrap up to be quite honest i'm really sorry this wrap up is like going all over the place and it's really shitty i'm really trying my best okay so for june tbr or currently reading i am currently reading architect jalanan by temi abdullah this is like the second book in the it's the second book after Pelukis Jalanan of which I have the um, review down below. Um, I'm also reading The Child by Fiona Barton, which is also the second book uh, in the I don't know Kate Walters I don't know, but I know it's the second book by Fiona Barton, and it's the second book after The Widow, which I also have a review down below. And the next I'm reading is Garam by Rui Mehta. I actually finished this today. And the next book that I have is Speed Reading Made Easy. And that's pretty much it that I'm reading this month. I'm also reading a lot of manga, but because I'm reading far too much of it too fast, I'm not going to include it in the next TBR or in the next wrap up unless it's like a more than 10 chapters then i'll probably talk about it so that is it for this video hope you guys enjoy it apologies if my review makes no sense i'll definitely try to improve and see you in the next video bye guys